He is the one who was crucified for the sins of all mankind. He was punished in our place. And now he gives us true spiritual rest. And of course, the word Sabbath does mean rest. That's what we're going to be enjoying tonight. Uh, and that's what God has promised to us uh, by faith in, in his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. We're going to be opening our worship service by singing a very traditional hymn, uh, Rock of Ages, Clef for Me. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw in with a true heart and confess our sins to God our Father, asking him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Holy and merciful Father, I confess that I am by nature sinful, and that I have disobeyed you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have done what is evil and failed to do what is good. For this I deserve your punishment, both now and in eternity. But I am truly sorry for my sins, and trusting in my Savior, Jesus Christ, I pray, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. been merciful to us and has given his only son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. In the peace of forgiveness, 
Let us praise the Lord. God, the strength of all who trust in you, mercifully hear our prayers. Be gracious to us in our weakness, and give us strength to keep your commandments in all that we say and do. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. The first lesson for this, the seventh week after Pentecost, is recorded for us in Joshua chapter 23. After a long time had passed and the Lord had given Israel rest from all their enemies around them, Joshua, by then he was a very old man, summoned all Israel, their elders, leaders, judges, and officials, and said to them, I am very old. You yourselves have seen everything the Lord your God has made to all these nations for your sake. It was the Lord your God who fought for you. Remember how I have allotted um, as an inheritance for your tribes all the land of the nations that remain, the nations I conquered between the Jordan and the Mediterranean Sea in the west. The Lord your God himself will push them out for your sake. He will drive them out before you, and you will take possession of their land, as the Lord your God promised you. Be very strong. Be careful to obey all that is written in the book of the law of Moses, without turning aside to the right or to the left. Do not associate with these nations that remain among you. Do not invoke the names of their gods or swear by them. You must not serve them or bow down to them. But you are to hold fast to the Lord your God, as you have until now. The Lord has driven out before you great and powerful nations. To this day, no one has been able to withstand you. One of you routs a thousand, because the Lord your God fights for you, just as he promised. So be very careful to love the Lord your God. This is the word of our Lord. 
The second lesson is recorded for us in Hebrews chapter 4. Perhaps we can note that the Sabbath rest here is the gospel that Jesus gives us true spiritual rest and peace with our God in heaven. Therefore, since the promise of entering his rest still stands, let us be careful that none of you be found to have fallen short of it. For we also have had the good news proclaimed to us, just as they did. But the message they heard was of no value to them, because they did not, um, they did not share the faith of those who obeyed. Now we who have believed enter that rest, just as God said, so I declare an oath in my anger, they shall never enter my rest. And yet his works have been finished since the creation of the world. For somewhere he has spoken about the seventh day in these words. On the seventh day, God rested from all his works. And again, in the passage above, he says, they shall never enter my rest. Therefore, since it still remains for us to enter that rest, and since those who have formerly had the good news proclaimed to them did not go in because of their disobedience, God again set a certain day, calling it today. This he did when long time later he spoke through David, as in the passage already quoted, today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts. For if Joshua had given them rest, God would not have spoken later about another day. There remains then a Sabbath rest for the people of God. For anyone who enters God's rest also rests from their work, just as God did from his. Let us therefore make every effort to enter that rest so that no one will perish by following their example of disobedience, the word of God. Alleluia. Happy are those who hear the word, hold it fast in an honest and good heart, and bring forth fruit with patience. Alleluia. Congregation may rise. The Gospel from Matthew chapter 11. At that time, Jesus said, I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and learned and revealed them to little children. Yes, Father, for this is what you are pleased to do. All things have been committed to me by my Father. No one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and those to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. The Gospel of the Lord. Let us confess our faith with the whole Christian church on earth in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. We continue by singing the hymn, I, I Heard the Voice of Jesus Say.
grace, mercy, and peace be multiplied to you from God our Father. And from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who is our rest, he is our Sabbath, he is our peace with God. The portion of God's word for our consideration this evening is found for us in Matthew chapter 11, verses 25 through 30 that was previously read as the gospel reading. My dear friends in Christ, you know there's been a lot of question about the source of the coronavirus. Where did it come from? Who is responsible for it? And there are even some who have a more spiritual or a religious question about it. Is God involved in this? Why doesn't he do something about it? And if God loves us, then surely he needs to have some impact on this virus. Well, God is deeply involved. In fact, um, as I read through the Old Testament, I found that many of the events that talk about plagues and talk about hardships, God is extremely involved. And there is really one aspect of God's involvement that he really wants people to know. It's summed up with this word, repentance. I'll give you just one example. And that is from, well, the rather little known story of King Manasseh. He was the son of a very faithful king, and that is King Hezekiah. But... Manasseh was not like his father at all. He was wicked, and he was an evil king. His father had destroyed some of the high places that had false worship and some of the altars there. Well, he rebuilt them, both the high places and the altars. He set an idol in the temple of God. He bowed down and worshipped the stars in the sky. He reestablished witchcraft in the kingdom and also spiritists but probably the worst crime of all at least in our thinking was that he caused his children to be sacrificed in fire he truly was a wicked king and God had had enough from his loving hand he brought down the Assyrians and they conquered Judea they captured King uh, Manasseh and they took him away as a prisoner with a hook in his nose and with shackles on his wrists. There as he was suffering, he humbled himself. He asked God to forgive him. And by God's grace, he was permitted to come back to his kingdom and he was much sadder but also much wiser as he ruled the, king, the kingdom till the end of his uh, life. So we know that God is involved, and this is just one of the events in the Bible where we see that God is deeply involved. And so, as we look at the present situation with the coronavirus, it's important that we get this message out of that too. And that is, since this is a global pandemic, that God wants people to repent. Now we could look out there to many false religions, um, many different wicked people in our society or in our country or even in our city. But they're out there. But you and I weren't here. And so we need to look at ourselves and come to the conclusion that we too have sinned. I want you to think of a stray word that you have said. Do you have something? Maybe it was a swear word. Maybe it was an unkind word to someone else. Maybe it was a word of gossip. Or how about the thought processes? It's true that um, a temptation is not necessarily a sin, but when we give it over to, when we give our minds over to it, when we think about sinful things, then it becomes sin for us. This evening we uh, confessed our sins before God.
But if you're something like me, sometimes I don't do it fully with my mind and with my heart. So whether you were with the program or not during the confession and absolution, I'd like to take, oh, maybe 30 seconds for us all to just meditate on that. We'll have a little time of silence. Think about a sin that you've committed recently and come before your God and ask Him for forgiveness. Now that we've taken care of that, let's get on with our text. Because we know that a follow-up to repentance means that the Lord invites us to come. Here we have a prayer of Jesus. And he says, um, I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and learned and revealed them to little children. These things is the story about himself. How he was humbly born. How Jesus lived that perfect life in our place. How he suffered all the abuse of mankind during his trial and during his crucifixion. And how he was to rise from the dead. And all these things, they didn't cater to the wise and to the learned. They often rejected him. So it wasn't a matter of how intelligent a person was or how reasonable a person was who grasped on to the kingdom of God, but rather how humble they were. And here's another section of scripture that reassures us that children truly are in the kingdom of God by faith. He invites little children to come to him. In fact, he told parents and his disciples, don't hinder them. For of such is the kingdom of God. He held little children in his arms and said, Do not offend, not, do not cause one of these little ones to sin because they believe in me. Yes, and we bring those little children to our Lord through baptism, don't we? Because we know that baptism is a washing of rebirth and a renewal by the Holy Spirit. It was the Holy Spirit speaking through the Apostle Peter when he said, Repent and be baptized, every one of you. The promise is for you and your children. But this promise isn't only for those who are infants, who are babies, who are little children, but also who humble themselves and become like little children in the faith. Maybe I can use the example of a man that I knew quite well, his name was August Schick. He was a man, very old, from South Dakota. He had a third grade education. And when I'd go to see him, August Schick would tell me this very simple sentence. He said, you know, Pastor, that a lot of people think that they have the Bible outsmarted. That was an example of his uh, just childlike faith. He just believed that it was true. If the Bible said it, then that was the Word of God, and that was good enough for him. And so you see that as we humble ourselves and become like little children, simply believing our Father in Heaven, whatever He tells us, then we too have been given that gift of faith. And we too are invited to come to Jesus. And so we ought to praise Him. We ought to praise our Father in Heaven just as Jesus did. Because you see, we know that He washed away our sins. We know that Jesus paid our punishment for us. We know that we have that peace and that rest through our Messiah, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and our God. Yes, and who is it that gives us this? Jesus explained his oneness with the Father. He said, 
All things have been committed to me by my Father. No one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and those to whom the Son chooses to reveal Him. Do you see yourself in there personally? God has chosen you out of the masses of the population of the world. He has plucked you up out of humanity and he has chosen you to believe those simple truths of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And just as Jesus and the Father are one, so also we have been united to the triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. He chooses us. It's not that we choose him, but he has chosen to reveal him to us personally. And now as he invites us to come, he opens up his arms and this is what he says to us. He says, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Maybe you came in here with a burden. Maybe as you were thinking of that particular sin that you had, why did I do it again? Why did I think that way? And so it became a burden to you. There are many religions that um, think that God's commandments aren't nearly enough. So they pile on more rules and regulations for mankind. It's kind of like having a backpack full of heavy stones that we try to trudge along step by step, but it's very difficult. What happens when you have too many programs on your computer at one time? It freezes. And so when we put that emphasis on works in order for us to have a relationship with our Father in Heaven, it becomes too much of a burden. Sometimes we put burdens on ourselves. Sometimes we may think that we're sinful when we haven't sinned all that much in a particular way that uh, we might think that th something is sinful, that we said the wrong thing when we actually didn't. We sent in that ad that works on ourselves or getting a tinge of, boy, I still have to do something in order to get into heaven. I better be a good boy. I better be a good girl in order to make it into that place called paradise. Or sometimes that burden that we care is just simply living in this cursed world. Uh, do I have to get up for work again today? Or I am sick and tired of staying home and not being able to see those that I love. Sometimes that uh, those burdens and the load that we carry is just coming to realize that this world really stinks. But whatever the burden, then we have this invitation. Jesus invites us to come. And he says to him, to, to us, Come, all you who are weary, burdened, and I will give you rest. That rest, in ancient Hebrew, is the word Sabbath. And um, we have a Sabbath rest that's given to us. In the Old Testament, they were to break off of work on that seventh day. They were to work on Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. But Saturday, that seventh day, they were to knock off of work. And it wasn't just an outward expression. No, it was a sign. It was a picture of another one coming. I always remember the Bible passage in, I, in Exodus chapter 31, verse 31. I can always remember that because I think of the Trinity. Yeah, 31, 3 and 1, 1 and 3. Exodus 31, 13. And this is what it says. You shall keep my Sabbaths, for in them it will be a sign between me and you 
that I am the Lord your God who makes you holy. There's only one way that God makes us holy, and that is through the suffering, death, and resurrection of the Messiah, Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. So they were to remember the Sabbath day by thinking ahead to the time when God would fulfill his promise. And we in the New Testament, we look back, don't we? Our Sabbath rest is when Jesus Christ died on the cross for all of our sins. So Jesus is our Sabbath. He is our rest. He's the one that brought us peace between ourselves and God the Father. When you're united to him. Oh, what a relief. And so he says to us, with open arms, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. That doesn't mean all of our problems are gone. Oh, no. We still have those struggles, don't we? And that's why he says to us that, uh, come and take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. A yoke that Jesus asks us to go in is oftentimes, it would, in Jesus' day, it was called the, um, the yoke of the law. But that's not what Jesus was talking about. He was talking about the gospel. And a yoke was a curved piece of wood that had a hoop underneath it that was put on beasts of burden to carry a cart or to, to put a plow ahead in a field. And now he says we should partner with him. We should be yoked with the gospel of Jesus Christ. And that makes everything much simpler because he is humble and gentle in heart. And he finds rest for our souls. Now we still struggle with sin, don't we? We all have that old sinful nature in us that we have to fight. And each and every one of us has a struggle because each and every one of us has that old sinful flesh that we try to put down, that we try to, to overcome. And that we're going to have until we die. But be patient. Carry on. Don't give up. Because we have another Sabbath waiting for us. When Jesus comes in his glory, then he opens his arm and gives us another invitation. He will say to us, and everyone who trusts in him as Lord and Savior, you will say, Come, you who are blessed by my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. So we put our, our, ourselves into those wonderful, loving, gentle hands of our Savior who loves us, who will one day show us his glory. So during this time, of the epidemic then we know that there are a lot of people asking a lot of questions but we know this that God is indeed involved in this pandemic he indeed wants something from the people of the world and he wants something for us the message is he wants us to humble ourselves he wants us to realize that he gives us an invitation he gives us an invitation to come to Him when we're weary, when we're burdened, and He will give us that true spiritual rest. May God strengthen us to live that, in that spiritual rest as long as we live. Amen. Congregation may rise. Now the peace of God that surpasses all understanding shall guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.
Blessed are you, Lord God, sovereign of the universe. You have sanctified us through your Son's fulfillment of all the commandments and laws. You lit the lamp of faith in our hearts through the Holy Spirit. You created heaven and earth in six days. The heavens and the earth were fi finished, the whole host of them. And on the seventh day you completed the work you had done, and you rested on the seventh day. And you blessed that seventh day and sanctified it. You have lovingly and willingly given us your Sabbath, holy Sabbath um, as an inheritance to remember your creation and your redemption. Blessed are you, Lord God, King of the universe. You set it apart to teach us about your grace and blessing that should come through our Savior, the Messiah. You have chosen us out of the people of the earth to be your children through Jesus Christ, our Lord. We praise you for the Sabbath rest we have for our souls, knowing that all of our sins are forgiven through the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. In him, we know you as our loving Father. Lord Jesus, the fulfillment of the Sabbath promises, you invite us to come to you and you will give us that rest Lord, we come to you with our sins, our sorrows, our disappointments, our challenges. Grant us your peace. Lord, as the husband of your bride, the church, we thank you for bringing Christian couples together to begin their life of mutual faith and encouragement. We ask your continual blessing on the marriage of James and Judy um, Biederwitz. Uh, who are celebrating their 50th wedding anniversary. Let their love for you grow stronger, so their love for each other may also grow stronger. And now hear us as we bring you our private petitions. Grant us your peace as we return to the roles you have assigned to us. May your spirit always walk with us, that we might be light shining in this dark world. We pray all this in the name of Jesus' name, who also taught us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, grant to your church the Holy Spirit and the wisdom that comes from above. Let nothing hinder your word from being freely proclaimed to the joy and edifying of Christ's holy people so that we may serve you in steadfast faith and confess your name as long as we live. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. We ask that you would remain standing for the final hymn since we'll be standing right next to our Lord and Savior when he comes again in his glory. So we sing, Lord, when your glory I shall see.
Just a couple of special announcements. First of all, there are the announcements written out for you underneath the Lord's Supper in the lobby there. If you haven't picked it up before church, please pick up your copy after uh, church. And perhaps we can say this now, that um, this coming Monday uh, is the third Monday of the month, and usually our boards meet on that day. But um, as situations will occur, uh, we are having our parish planning council meeting on that day. That's at 6.30 this next Monday. Now I wish you God's richest blessing for the rest of this week and uh, into next week. And I ask you also to be a blessing to the people around you. Thank you.